I was born in Offaly, yeah, in Tullamore. My dad was, was a tribe. There was, there was a singing and dancing house on the farm. It was a farmhouse, but there was a lot of music in it when we were very small. And that kind of stopped, I suppose, in the 70s. But, you know, and then next thing, uh, Top of the Pop seemed to come around the corner, but we weren't into that. We liked, my older brothers had brought rock into the house. So that's the kind of music we started playing as well. And when I came here, it was, I think, the, you become more nationalistic when you're away from home. So you go to the Swan, you go to the Archway, and you're listening to old Dingle Spike and bands like that. My mates, we were squatting in Camden Town all that. I mean, these were the best days of your lives, really, because it was pretty free and easy. We weren't up to any development, really. It was just work, fish and chips, rock bands and squatting. I think once you come to London, that was it. We were based down in South London then, and um, I, I, I just love the older lads coming. You just sit in amongst them and say nothing. And you could meet half of Ireland in the one bar from Cork or mm. Donegal. You know the way it was. Mm. It's just, And I found that a great comfort. If you were missing home and all that, just sit in amongst them and say nothing and learn. Um, you come from Offaly, you meet people from Offaly, but over here you could meet everyone from Ireland in the one room, really. So I, th I thought that was very exciting. The pose had come true and, do you know, and rum saw me in the lash and that, and red roses. But I think the punk element helped that, with that, that, rah, that, do you know what I mean? The go races, that kind of songs, um, Paddy walks on the railway, to drums and all that matters. They walk, the songs like that, because there's great energy in them songs. Mm -hmm. And the stories behind them is, if you like, with trains and metal and all that, I mean, it can be anything, can it? You know, sort of high octane. So, yeah, I like that. But to me, it was still boring because I was venturing on into the heavier stuff. Um, but loving Irish music live and starting to buy a lot of Irish music here and to catch up in the folk team, but meeting a lot of folk musicians and um, sort of got, you know, I met a lot of English guys playing folk, to be honest, down in South Norwood and places like that. And they, you and McCall had lived around there, and Peggy Seeger was still in the woods, you know what I mean? So I was very interested in that side of it, reading the books and finding out where songs, and meeting some mentors like Tom Madden and that. And he was just, to, to listen to him play was fantastic. He was a genius. Lovely voice, great guitar player, and the five string banjo. And I could sing. My, and this, I didn't, at the time, I, I wasn't really thinking about it. I just loved the music and loved the singing, you know? Um, how we ended up, we, I ended up playing jamming with a couple of lads from Carlo and we kind of had a rock, started off kind of a rock folk, but ended up just being folk songs. Changed over because I think with the Jackie Charlton years and all that, when that started in the late 80s and that, 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 that really changed a lot and the people were getting together more for those matches and, and it was all cool, all the, that folk sort of thing it was, became really cool. Mm. And if you like jokey songs, Christy Moore of course had a handle in them. Mm. So he was big in everyone's book, and uh, yeah, there was no looking back, really. Well, what happened was I was in the band then, with, with, with the whole thing in South London, and my ex-partner and the people in the pub, and all the Scottish people, and the Carlo lads that I'd met in Carlo, because I was in a rock band in Carlo as well, because I was there for a year. And they all came over to London, so we, we, we formed a band over here, but we came, became more folk. And then we were getting gigs. But see, these English guys, they'd all seen me and they were like, there he is. That's the singer, get him, get him. But I wasn't really minded, you know, it's just, you know, I wasn't thinking about it. It changed, you know, like the 80s here was brilliant, obviously. And the Jack, the Jack Charlton thing, like I said, that spurred it on a lot. Um, the likes of the Swan, the Arch, with Venue, these places. Like you had friends, had family living in North London, you would meet up. You'd either go, they'd either come to South London and see you in the Swan, or you'd go up to the Arch and meet them. It was always people getting together. And I think in the 90s, that kind of died out a bit. And then, of course, when Ireland hit the boom again, people were actually leaving here, and a lot of the Irish I knew went back. And down the years, we sent a lot of people back, um, married or whatever, or paid their dues. And like, lots and lots of people from all over Ireland would probably know us in the woodwork from playing at certain functions or whatever, or seeing us in gigs. But it, it was a sad, I found that a bit of a sad time. And a lot of the Scottish lads and you went up to Glasgow, moved back home. And uh, look, it was good, but I stayed here. And uh, we'd done an album in 2005, and it was kind of like a demo album, but it was great. And we could have done a lot more with it. But um, Kane O'Rourke was in the band with us. He, he, he moved back to Ireland. And um, 
Mark Cunha was in. Mark was actually in for the album as well. There was a crossover where the two lads were here for a while doing the album, but Kane moved. And I guess the dynamics and things changed around a bit. And uh, we were busy playing gigs. And we said, oh, yeah, we'll be back and record next thing, the next year, the next year, you know. And we talk, there's talk of, we've done bits, there's loads of individual things that I've done or the lads have done, but we never actually nestled down to do another album. There's loads of talk of it, and we've actually got stuff ready to go now as well. So yeah, and I've always we'd always come to functions here, or I'd come here with like my parents-in-law and all that at the time. You know, there'd be something on. You'd come here if there was any of the bands on. This is where you come to see them too. You know, and we ended up coming in here and playing in these places too. You know, down the years. So yeah, I, I have great respect for it. In a little town they call Belfast, the apprentice trade I found. I put my knees in our sweet happiness, if I spent in that little town. The sad misfortune came over me, caused me to stray from the land. Far away from my friends and relations, betrayed by the Blackford band. Tied up with a black felt band I took a stroll with this pretty fair maid The gentleman passing us by Well I knew she meant the doing of him By the look in her roguish black eye She was good fair and handsome Her neck it was just like a swan And her hair had hung over her shoulder Tied up with a Universal song, I've sang it with sailors around the world in San Francisco or wherever, so it's, uh, everybody knows it. So yeah, and uh, I'm going to move on to a song that was actually a Scottish song. It's written by a um, famous... Um Robert Burns of all people, would you believe it? And it's called the Coral Kildare. And summer's here at last And the birds are singing in the trees The little hearts they're glad But 
mine is also sad For my true love is far away from me In the rose upon the briar By the water running clear It brings joy to the linnets and the I will wear and I'll come back my head and in velvet so green I will appear yes it's this I undertake for my own true lover's sake for she lives in the current And it's straight I will repair to the cover of the bed. For it's there I'll find tidings of my dear. And all you who are in love and cannot end And it's great I will repair to the color of the land. For it's there I find tidings of my dear. Yes, it's great I will repair to the color of the For it's there I find. There's a song called The Coracle there. There's a song called Fisher Lassies. And uh, I love this song. Hey, come on, you Fisher Lassies. I'm a wild Karen Morgan Gandhi. In Fiamaki. Bucky Adam Fiamaline. All the country around. There's the God the Heaven. With the key down the town. Rise up. Your bundle in your hand, we have stationary boys, surely hit the sand. We tend to eat the waste, and a kettle for the tea. For you may be lying, hunger, and the road you are making. Well, the jury is still lying, then they can take a day or two with my new fish and food glass. Pass the car, and you'll rise at five. But it sleeps still in your eye You're awake to find the gut in your arms And on the arm you cake Great bird fish in their way Stone away in shields Walked among the humber Among the bad fields With me and brings me We travelled up and down But the best of got the hair And the key down the town Well it's late into the morning It's late into the night and the cotton sheared boys looking up inside And you peek like the wind when you dipped him in the tree And you wish you all a thousand miles away from the earth There were cures there and piles there Piles of canny shields as he's at the big Piles at the fields and you wish them fish Have been all up in the sea By the time you finish cotton Yeah, baby.
the hair rules the he yarn from But let's cut the hair rules the he yarn from Oh come tell me Sean McFarrell Tell me why you hurry so Hush and buku, hush and buku By the river, way from known to you and me. But one more word, the signal token, whistle out the march and tune. Wait your pike upon your shoulder at the rising of the moon. Of the rising of the moon, of the rising of the moon. Wait your pike upon your shoulder at the rising of the moon. All along that swinging river where black masked men were seen. I bought the shining weapon from the road. Oh, this is a lovely song called The Two Fishers. Fishes? And, uh, I'll grab this now, sorry. This I heard by the singing of the <coughs> Canadian called Stan Rogers, but he didn't write it. It's a poem that they found. Anyway, can't you just in and out? 
No. No, he's leaving it like this. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Ross. I mean, hello, Ross. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> This is a lovely song called uh, 45 Years. It's a long song. This was written by Mr. Sam. My blood sings with wine and I'm running naked inside. Garden the trees and weak in the knees and the skies are painful blue. I just like to look around, but honey, all I see is you. Now the summer city lights can soften the nights and you think that the air is clear. And I'm sitting with friends for 45 cents and buying a little glass. Got something to say when I'm so far away that I don't know who I'm talking to. Cause you just walk in the door, honey, all I see is you. And I just wanna hold you closer than I've ever held anyone before. You see, it'd be twice the way for you, true, but life for the honey, what else for? After 22 years, you think I can find a way to let you know somehow. Smiling face 45 years from now. Spawn in the lights and stage every night. I've been reaching out to find a friend. Someone who knows all the words. The sang so she heard. Those are all the stories. Then. Maybe after the show, she last week to go home. I was smiling as her eyes, honey, all I see is you. Hey, man, I just wanna hold it closer than I've ever held anyone before. You see, you'd be twice the wife and you're true with life, honey, what the hell's it for? After 22 years, you think I can find a way to let you know somehow. I just wanna see the smiling face 45 years from now. This is a song called Master McGrath. The story behind Master McGrath is that um, some farmer had had hounds down near um, Wexford or Waterford, somewhere down there back in the day. And um, the farmer was the litter didn't work out well anyway. He was breeding them and he was taking them away anyway in the sack. And there was a hole in the bottom of the sack and the, the runt fell out of the sack. And he was picked up by another farmer and raised him. He ended up in Lurgan anyway, and trained and became the great Master McGrath, who won the Waterloo Cup three years in a row. And the, the 1869 and 1771, I think, on the fourth year they electrified hair, and he didn't win four years. So. 1869 being the date in the year. Waterloo Sportsman. More than a pair, can the great prizes and bear them a walk? Never count in the Ireland and Master McGrath. On the 12th of November, the day of the town, the crannies keep on the left lurking town, but the hell and the channel it soon go come on. I'm the turkey they landed on the shore 
And when they came to that great building town, finding their sportsmen all gathered around, said one of those gentlemen standing nearby, Is that the great dog they called Master McGrath? And another of those gentlemen standing around, said, I don't care a damn for you, Irish Greyhound. And another he speared with a scornful ha ha, to see it humble the pride of your Master McGrath. Forward, he said, gentlemen, there's any among you got money to spend. Be grand English noble, I know, and care to straw his five thousand to one upon Master McGrath. Well, McGrath, he looked up and he wagged his old tail. Forming his lordship, she had no good men. Don't fear no more roads, now don't fear the McGrath. Covered and great in his pride, the master and keeper were close by their sides. They let them away, and the crow cried, Hurrah! For the pride of all England and the master in the car. And as they rode on, as quick as the wind, I won the said road that takes you from your home. You shall have stayed there in your Irish domain and come again along the London Albion. Sometimes before her, sometimes behind. He held a paw and he jumped on his back. Long live the Republic, said Master McGrath. Story of the great Master McGrath, in some shape or form. A Waterloo Cup three years in a row. Now. Okay, um, you know the, the great Ralph McTell, he's a friend of all ours, around South London here. He pops in here, the Kenny now and again, and uh, it's a great song you wrote called Fair to Hear. Okay. Uh, clear to Hear by uh, Ralph McTell. <laughs> um, it's great, it's an absolute pleasure to be asked to play here at the Irish um, Cultural Centre here in Hammersmith. We've played here several times with our great friend Ross Gannon, who asked us here. We'd have Manny's a good night here. Um, New Year's Eve, St. Patrick's Night, and just concerts in between. Always a great crowd, always a great crack, and we wish you the best of luck. We will certainly be here supporting you all the way, and all together, hopefully, we can get this thing back on the road. So um, I'll do a song now um, from Ralph McTell called It's a Long, Long Way. From here to, I was going to say Camden. <laughs> there. Four share room. Hard for crowd Getting up late on Sundays I never get to my house It's a long, long way from here It's a long, long way from here Oh, it's a long, long Friday night comes around and he's only into fighting. 
ICC Hammersmith oh, Is that all right? No. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll do it kind of in the middle of the road, okay. It's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Ross and the crew here at the ICC Hammersmith. Cherry and the gang. Um, I'm Peter Cochran from Hungry Grass, and uh, hope to uh, keeping the music alive here during these very strange times. Well done, everybody, and we're, it's a pleasure to be part of it all. So let's keep it alive, yeah. This song is called The Old One Garvin Oak. Well, as I went out the morning, going to the garden fair, and I spied a pretty fair babe with the sunlight in her hair. Well, her waves so delightful, and her voice rang like a bell. And as I overtook her, well, I asked if she was well. So lay down, you wouldn't show me love, swear it is no joke. And I'll tell to you the story of the old and garden Well, as we approached in garden, with a scared of me to stare, she asked me why I raised my hat to a tree so old and bare. Well, I told her of the legends that if the tree should ever come down, it would be a great disaster and then Garvin would be drowned. So lay down when you wouldn't show me love, I swear it is no joke. 
And I'll tell to you the story of the old and carving old. Now again she started laughing and my face grew very red. And she said that only fools believe what these old legends said. When her laughter was contagious, but the truth do you want to tell? By the time I reached the garden, I began to laugh as well. So lay down your woman, show me love, I swear it is no deal. And I'll tell to you the story of the old and garden home. As I sit here by my fireside, it's the autumn of my life. And the darling girl I met the day, she's now my darling wife. Well, I have a lovely daughter and a son to push my oak. And all because I'm raised me hat to the old and garden home. So lay down your wooden, show me love, I swear it is no joke. And I'll tell to you the story of the old and garden home. Oh, lay down your wooden, show me love, I swear it is no joke. And I'll tell to you the story of the old and garden home. Now, the Dungarvan Oak. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. In a neat little town they called Belfast, the apprentice trade I was bound. Happened not ease and I was sweet happiness that I spent in that neat little town. The sad misfortune came over me, all went straight from the land. Far away from my friends and relations, betrayed by the Blackford band. 